All right, so this is the class on Google Maps. Um, we've done this about once a year, I believe for the past three or so years. Um, Google Maps has changed in that time, but pretty much everything you've ever learned about it is still applicable. They haven't removed things from it. Um, some things may be in a slightly different location, but all in all, it, it's still decently intuitive. This will be mostly done on a computer at the very end. If someone wants, uh, we can take a look at what it looks like on mobile. It's just a lot smaller of a screen for everyone to look at. So we generally like to try and do things using the computer. Also, if anyone has any questions, uh, definitely put it in the chat or raise your hand. And we will also stop at certain points where people can ask questions. If you have any questions that you remember after we're done, feel free to reach out to Mary and I can, um, and whatever questions she gets, I can add to the slides so that everyone can reference that later. At the end of the class, as always, everyone will get a link to both the slides and the video. So that means if you want a slight refresher on anything that was talked about in the slides, you know, in six months or a year from now, uh, you can always go back to that and see what things have been updated on there. Um, also, if anyone has any like specific how-to questions, I can also link um, a you know a, a specific article on how to do whatever you're asking on the slides as well. So you can go back and look at that if you ever forget. Google Maps um, is massive. A lot of other map alternatives for smartphones and such use the exact same data that Google uses. So for example, if you're from if you use Waze, which I know gained popularity a while back, um, you're using the exact same traffic information, the exact same route information, all of that stuff. So it's kind of if you prefer another map, um, a lot of these options will be, you'll be able to do it with that map software, but just realize a lot of the data is coming from the same location, from the same source. One thing that Google Maps makes it fairly easy to do is share your location. Uh, the reasons why you may want to do this is one, if you're traveling with someone else, um, depending on the distance, sometimes people will, you know, you'll pass through a green light but it'll turn red by the time they get there. And this way on their map, they can still see where you are. The other nice thing is if you're going to a party or a get together, you can share your map, your location with the host and the host can basically see, oh, they'll get here in 30 minutes or they'll say, oh, this person has hit traffic. They're gonna be 10 minutes late. And that way you don't have to keep doing that thing where you text them and update them as to the time of your arrival they'll know exactly when you're going to arrive. Uh, one of the questions about that is, well, is it safe to share my location? And um, the general answer is, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously don't share it with people who you don't know, but whenever you share your location, uh, Google gives you the option of when will this permission expire? So you can say, share my location for the next two hours. And that way, you know, if someone checks in on you two days later, they're not going to see exactly where you are. And you do this by clicking on your icon. So basically, if you're driving, it's the little blue dot that is you. You click on it and you say share and then it will bring up. It'll ask you, who do you want to share this with? And you just click or type in the name of someone on your contacts lists and then it will show it will share that information with that person. Uh, this one's useful. Um, you can in your Google settings, which is located in the top right or in the hamburger menu, um, which may be on the top left if you're using your computer, uh, you can set your, you can do your settings so that it will always show you where you park. This is generally pretty good um, it will, 
kind of automatically determine, hey, this person's going 50 miles an hour, they probably aren't walking. And then whenever you stop <laughs> doing that insane speed and you're not on a street, um, it will generally say, okay, your car is parked here. And then whenever you try and go back to your car, you can just open Google Maps and it will tell you where it is. Um, I don't like this. I like to kind of do things manually. So basically whenever you are using Google Maps and you park your car and you get out of it, you will still be that blue icon because the blue little center dot is you. Um, you click on that and you click on the option that says save your parking. Um, if you so desire, you can add notes to that pin. Um, so you can take a photo of where your car is. You can say I'm in spot 43 on level two kind of thing. Um, and then it will save that information so it's easy for you to get back to your car. Um, can I interrupt for a second? We have someone yeah. who's not seeing your screen. Is everyone on Zoom being able to see Tim's screen? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what's going on for you. She's just, just seeing the black screen with your name on it. She's not seeing your slides. Um, try clicking on the gallery in the top right and see if you're just seeing my profile instead of my screen. That's true. And I mean, worst comes to worst, we'll send out a recording of this. And much as I, I don't mean to diminish Tim's layout, but the, what he's telling you is far more interesting than the slides that he's presenting. Richier than painting your car? <laughs> yes, to, to be able to find it. You could, you oh, could put oh, big, oh, like, oh. you know, sun, sunflowers on your car and be able to find it in a parking lot. Okay. Or you can pin it, right, Tim? Exactly. Okay. So, I mean, you can always drive around in like a hot pink car and then it's fairly easy to find. Yeah. But not everyone wants to paint their car a, a very visible color. Um, one thing you can try to do if you're having an issue looking at the screen is you can exit zoom and you can come back in and that should reset everything. Okay. Right, we'll continue. So one thing you can do is you can measure distance. Um, this can kind of be scary at times because Google always knows where you are. But if, for example, you're an avid jogger or you like riding your bike or you just like seeing the places you visited, you can turn this on and then you can go back in time and see exactly where you've been. You can click on the route and it will tell you how far it was. So for runners, this is kind of useful um, kind of see where you've got, where you've been or see new places where you want to go and add that to your route. Um, I know my dad who really <coughs> likes biking. Um, he will basically print a map of the entire area and then try and figure out what roads he hasn't been on that year. And then I'll <laughs> add that. So by the end of the year, he has basically the entire, you know, within 50 mile radius of Peterborough. Um, all that will be filled out with where he's been on his bike. Okay. Um, it's also slightly useful uh, if you want to just see how much grass you have in order to buy grass seed or something like that. Um, but basically you would drop a pin and then you would click on the pin and you would click on measure distance and then you can kind of click around and make shapes. Um, and it will tell you, you know, the area within the shape or it will tell you the area um, from pin to pin. So you can kind of easily see, you know, how far am I from a lake or how far is this vacation rental from the boat dock kind of thing. Jim, does this apply to the phone too, what you're saying? Because <clears throat> I don't see the option of measuring distance. Yeah, it applies to both. Um, you basically drop a pin and then you click on the pin and one of the options will be uh, measure distance. Um, it is easier on the computer, but that's primarily because it's a much larger screen. But in a little bit, I'll show you how to do that in um, 
in Google Maps itself. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next thing that I find very useful is custom lists. Uh, so basically this is locations that you visit often or locations where, you know, six prospect street means absolutely nothing to me, but it's the SNHU hospital. Um, so if I want to go to, you know, the hospital to, you know, a specific department or the ER or something like that, I can just type in hospital. And while it will then give me options for all the hospitals near me, it will also show me the location I have set as hospital. So this is really nice for, you know, your doctor's offices. So your dentist, your eye, um, your optometrist, your whatever location you go to often, because you can just say, um, it always bothers me when I say it because my phone starts going crazy, but you can always say, hey, Google, I'm going to go to my dent. I, I want to go to my dentist's office and it will know what you're talking about and it will take you there without you having to remember the actual address. Uh, for people like me who are definitely map challenged, primarily because I grew up in an era where I didn't learn the location of anything, I would just type it into the GPS. Um, this is very nice because the actual street addresses mean almost nothing to me. It's the name of the place that matters. So with lists, you can create a list for all the places that you want to go. Um, and you can also create a list for anything. So if you have certain restaurants that you really like, you can create a list with those restaurants. Um, and I'll show you how to create a list and how to add things to the list. The next thing you can do is plan ahead. So if you ever like me, and for some unknown reason, the Manchester airport does not offer direct flights to everywhere in the world, you know, which is very unfortunate. Um, I'm generally looking at, you know, how long is it going to take me to get to the Boston airport, you know, at 8 p.m. the day before I need to go? Well, whenever it says it's going to take me an hour and a half to get there, something that I always forget is the traffic at 8 p.m., is not the traffic next day at 8 a.m. So one of the really nice things you can do is you can look at estimated traffic for a given time period. So you can see, oh, my hour and a half drive is actually gonna be closer to two hours and 10 minutes. And that way you know that you need to leave a little bit earlier than expected. So, one of the nice things about this is one, you can just kind of see what the traffic is. Uh, you, you're going to be able to see what the traffic is going to look like the next day or the next week. But you can also say, hey, Google, I want to arrive at location X at 10 a.m. And then Google will basically remind you the next day. It'll say, hey, you wanted to get to location X at 10 a.m., it's now 8.10, you should probably leave in 20 minutes. So it will kind of remind you and it will be able to tell you at what time you're supposed to leave based on the current traffic conditions in the future, which is really cool. And I'll definitely show you how to use that. Okay. Um, so I do realize this slide says questions. Um, well, so we can yeah. definitely have time to ask questions before we go into actually showing you what Google Maps looks like. Yes, we have a bunch of questions in the classroom. Um, one is, um, because I thought I had signed up for this, I was expecting a link, but I didn't get the link. So I'm not oh, to getting the... to it at all. Oh, so this is the what you're seeing on the screen is the Zoom. OK. So, um, and he's going to show you everything that you need to see. And I will send you afterwards. I'll get your email. Okay. So I'll send you the I'm listening. I'm reading, but it's like, okay. yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I, I'm on my phone and I don't see any place where I would say uh, leave now or depart at or arrive by on my phone. Are you going to yep. show us that later? Or? Yeah, I'll first show you everything on the computer. 
and then if uh, people want, I can also show on the phone. It's just on the phone, you'll see a much smaller screen. So it'll be harder to visualize what's going on. Okay, great. And one more question. Yeah, I have, well, I actually have two questions. Is that okay? <laughs> um, so the first question is, I'm particularly interested in finding hiking trails. Is there an easy way to do that in Google Maps? That's question one. And question two, can I upload GPS data to Google Maps like I can on Google Earth? So for the hiking trails, um, I haven't checked on that in a little bit, primarily because there are some hiking applications for your phone that did the job incredibly well. So I didn't bother to kind of look at Google Maps. Google Maps is very good at finding the trailhead locations. Um, so basically, where do you go in order to start hiking? Uh, but I don't think historically it's been very good at actually showing you where the trails are. That may have changed, but I know there are other maps um, or other tools that Mary and I have gone over that are specific to hiking trails, generally with user added data. Um, that Google just, for lack of a better term, uh, Google just doesn't have the time to kind of integrate in that manner with all the user content. Uh, so for your second question about like the actual data points, I don't think you can upload data points to Google as a whole, but you can upload those individual latitude and longitude measurements for yourself to make like a pinned location. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, Mary, I have a question for yeah. Tim. Um, on the phone, sometimes when you do the preview, you have to, for me, the challenge one, you have to totally get out of the program to get back in for the woman to start talking. Is that some other way of doing it without when you're trying to preview the route on the phone? Um, I'm not familiar with that issue, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Because the other thing I have is when, you, when you're going to show us on the phone how to do all this, I thought Google was supposed to reroute you if there's traffic situations. And several times, I think I've just been stuck in it. And, and then the other thing is Google tends to show you the long way around rather than you know, the shorter, less onerous path. <laughs> way. Each, each mapping program has its, its strengths. Waze will reroute you um, and pra perhaps often, too often and too quickly to be able to react to it. I think Apple Maps person is nicer than Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Um, I, Tim, do you have any sort of Yeah, so this is one of the issues where Google Maps has too many options, um, which is one of the reasons why functionally people, some people prefer Waze. So one thing that Google has is you can set your preferred like way to travel. Um, generally, uh, I think by default, it's kind of set on economy mode or eco mode. Um, you know, save the trees. So basically what that means is Google will weigh the carbon impact of the distance traveled compared to the time. And if it's within, you know, a, a certain percentage or a certain uh, amount of time difference, I'm not exactly sure what that number is. It just won't reroute you. So for example, if there's a route that takes 60 miles and it'll take you an hour to get there, versus if there's a route that takes 50 miles, but it takes you an hour and two minutes, it will take you on the shorter route. Um, what this also means is Waze is incredibly quick to basically say, all right, there's traffic ahead, go on these 10 side streets, uh, try not to die because you're in a city you've never been to, and good luck. Whereas Google will say, eh, this traffic has added five minutes to the time. We're just not gonna bother trying to go on this alternate route that has a whole bunch of twists and turns. Um, so for Google Maps, you can set it to always go the fastest time. And then it's very judicious with 
switching quickly. Um, primarily for me, whenever I'm use, using Google Maps, um, I just kind of want to get to the location or I just don't want to go on those side streets that Waze puts me on. So I just stick to the plan, even if I really hate Connecticut. <laughs> So, Tim, you don't like making right-hand turns from the left-hand lane? I mean, as long as there's like three lanes of traffic between me and the exit it wants me to go on, I'm all for it. <laughs> Just Jesus, take the wheel, turn right. right, and go. Right, because I think I've had occasions when they asked me to make a U-turn, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. If... But the other thing is, if I know the route part way, I can't stop in the middle of the thing and say, okay, Google take over. Can you? Yeah. Then I have to pull over and then tell them what, you know, I, I guess I know my, where my location is and then, you know, reactivate my destination if I. Yeah, essentially, um, you would just open up the Google Maps application and say directions or start, um, then it would start. For me personally, I just leave it on all the time. I have it plugged into the car so it's getting charged. So I don't really care about the battery drain. Um, and then it will yell at me occasionally saying, hey, you're going the wrong way until it eventually figures out, okay, this person no, you know, doesn't want to listen to me, but still wants Google Maps up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, show us some of these wonderful things on your computer. Yeah. So, um, I figured I'd start off with kind of a fun one. Uh, so this is Area 51. And if you're familiar with Google, you kind of know that you can drag like this little human body to see Street View. Um, if you are over Area 51, however, and you go to the bottom right to drag your little human, uh, it turns into a little UFO. Oh, wow. Very adorable. Uh, you can't actually look at Street View, but I just find that kind of cool. It's a little Easter egg. <laughs> All right. So um, whenever you go into Google Maps, uh, it'll look like this. If you're on a phone, it'll look like this, except you only see probably a fifth of what you see here because it's a vertical screen. Uh, in the top left is the search option. So this is where you will type stuff in that you want to find. Um, on the right-hand side, you will see the icon for you uh, if you have a Google account. And this will allow you to manage the account and just make sure that you're on the correct account. Um, generally, however, you'll be doing most of what you want in Google Maps using the left-hand side, the search icon. So I'm just going to search in Google Maps uh, Peterborough Town Library. Hit return, and then it will take me to the map surrounding Peterborough Town Library. I can see in the very middle, there is a red pin. I will see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. I'm not sure how much this is gonna, <laughs> gonna help, um, but you can see the red pin in the center of the screen. This is the Peterborough Town Library. Um, on the left-hand side is my little informational thing about what I just searched for. So I see that the Peterborough Town Library has a 4.9 rating out of five after 18 reviews. That seems like a very small number of reviews, but who am I kidding? Um, and I see down here some options. So the first option is directions. So basically this will, if I click on this, it will say, hey, uh, do you want to go from your current location to the Peterborough Town Library, and then it will give me directions. The second option is website. So this will take me to the Peterborough Town Library website. The third option is right now it says saved, but this is asking if you want to save the location and where you want to save it so that you can easily find it later. Uh, the, the next option is nearby. This is basically going to say, hey, there are food shops nearby. Hey, he, here are the gas stations nearby. Hey, here are the local attractions nearby. So this is a useful one for if you're traveling. Uh, you can kind of find your, um, your inn or your hotel 
beforehand on Google Maps, and then you can click on nearby, and it will tell you all of these local attractions that you can go see on your visit. Um, the next option is share. So this will just allow you to share this search with someone else. So it's occasionally useful for planning. Um, so you can search up a restaurant, you can hit share, you can send it to your friend and you can say, hey, what do you think about this restaurant? Instead of giving them the name of the restaurant and then they search for it. But for some reason, there are two restaurants with the same name, one in the correct city, one in a completely different city. <laughs> and then everyone gets super confused. Down below this, um, it'll also give more general information. The first thing is it'll tell you the street address. It will then also tell you what time it opens and closes. I find this one incredibly useful, uh, primarily because I can click on this little down arrow and it will tell me throughout the days of the week when it opens, when it closes. Um, so I know some restaurants for some reason are closed on Mondays. I can click on this and I can double check that. And I can double check that without going to their website, without going to their Facebook page, without going to wherever else. I can do it all within Google Maps. The next thing I can do is just see what the website is, uh, see the phone number to call to contact them. And then my absolute favorite is send to your phone. So basically what this allows you to do is if you're searching for a directions or location or anything, you can send this to your phone and then you'll have this information on your phone if you're using a big computer screen to look at stuff before you go on a trip. The next thing is also very interesting to me. It's popular times. So this isn't necessarily the, um, you know, how difficult is it gonna be to get there kind of thing. This isn't traffic data. This is how many people are in this building at a given time. So there are some really, really popular restaurants for brunch, for example. I can go in here, search for that restaurant and see the popular time. So if this was a restaurant, I could see, okay, where I am right now, it's really, really busy. But if I were okay with waiting until you know, 4 p.m. until after three, I see that it has less people there. So I know would know a good time to go somewhere to actually you know, have a better experience with less people. Another thing that's useful is the photos. So these are photos that people have taken and tagged to this location. Uh, primarily, this is useful for restaurants where you can kind of get a look at what the food is like or what the inside looks like. Um, questions and answers, uh, generally not that used, but you know, Mary should probably get someone on answering this question. I'm fascinated by that question. I'm not yeah. sure what you mean. Two years ago, is the library being taken down? Uh, the answer is yes, um, but it's kind of no longer an issue. And then as you scroll down, you can see review summary. Um, you can see people talk about the location. Um, one of the things that's nice about the reviews, again, is restaurants. You can kind of see what people's experiences were like. And unlike Yelp, uh, Google just kind of doesn't care about reviews. So you will see the negative reviews. Whereas on Yelp, you can pay to have the negative reviews taken down to keep your star rating high. Google's like, this is just something we provide. We don't really care if people like it or dislike it. So you can kind of get some more unbiased reviews from Google in that way. All right, so uh, let's look at Street View. So in order to look at Street View, uh, you'll go to the bottom left and there's a little person icon and you take it and then you're flying. So you pick the little guy up and you drop him wherever you wanna go. Doop. And then you get Street View. Um, once you're in Street View, you can then move the camera around and see what the library looks like. So if anyone notices, you can definitely tell that Google hasn't been by since the <laughs> library has been built. But the question is, when was this taken? Now, if I look in the top left-hand corner, it says Street View, 
August 2018. So we know that this image and all these images were taken August 2018. One of the fun things you can do, and this is generally more prevalent in big cities, is you can click on the little, it looks like a clock with arrows around it. You can click on this icon, and then you can say, I actually want to see what it looked like in 2008. And then you can see this is what it looked like in 2008. So you can see that the ivy is still on the walls kind of thing. Um, so this will actually be much more interesting to use uh, whenever Google updates again, because then you'll be able to go back in time and see what the old library looked like, and then go forward in time and see what the new library looks like. Um, in order to move around with the street view, you just click on the street in the direction you want to go, and it will load. So this is what downtown looked like in 2008. And we can see that Peterborough has not changed at all by going to 2015. <laughs> and it's pretty much the same, except the image quality is a little bit better. Uh, in, in cities, uh, so like New York City and Boston and stuff, this can be actually really fascinating, <clears throat> primarily because you can they have like really old images. Uh, so you can see you know what it looked like back in the 90s kind of thing. Um, and just see all the progress, quote unquote, that has happened. In order to get out of Street View, all you need to do is click on this button in the top left to make it go back. Once you're up here, um, you can notice that basically we see a lot of green. Well, right now I don't care about green. I just want to see what the roads are. So I can go to the bottom left, hover over layers, and click on traffic. Now you can see that the roads have changed color. I can see that right now, it's actually pretty heavy traffic going mm -hmm. on Pine Street to Granite Street. Uh, so from this, I assume that there's work being done um, and that you know I could avoid this if I want by going through Grove Street and then going to the library. So you can kind of see if there's traffic or work being done on a road at any given time by going to the traffic view. If I wanted to see what traffic was at different times, I can go to the bottom and where it says live traffic, I can click and I can click on typical traffic. So this will show me the average amount of traffic that a given street has on a given day at a given time. And this is day by day. So some day, so for example, Monday may have a much higher traffic than Thursday. So make sure that you're clicking on the correct day of the week. So I can see Monday, you know, the typical traffic at 9 a.m. is this, so some orange. Thursday, a little more orange. Let's see, Sunday, all green. But we can kind of see where churches get let out, possibly. Nope, traffic doesn't change. But you can kind of move this around and you can see at what point is there congestion, what point is there not congestion, which I find fun and occasionally useful. If we click on layers and we go back, um, we can see that there are a couple of different options. One is terrain. Uh, this isn't going to be that impressive for Peterborough, uh, but you can kind of scroll out a little bit and you can kind of see the... Uh, where there are hills and stuff. I don't know if you can see that where you are, but you can see that there's a hill here by the lines. Um, so you can kind of see how hilly an area can be, which could be useful for someone. If you go back, uh, transit. Um, if we notice, uh, Peterborough has zero transit. So we're going to go to Boston. Quick layers, transit, transit. And we can see these are the transit opportunities in Boston. So we can see that there's probably a subway or something that goes on here, the green line C. Uh, we can see where it is. We can see this is the blue line. This is the red line. So we can kind of see where all of the locations are for the subway and where it can take us. 
uh, one of the nice things is on your phone, you can save an area for offline viewing. So some people like using something like Google Maps for traveling in the subway in New York or Boston or a big city. Uh, but one of the negative things about doing that is if you're underground, you generally don't have good reliable internet mm -hmm. and then the map goes away. But if you download the map, then you have access to all of this location at all times, even if you're underground. Okay. Um, and you also can get directions for going places in a city using public transportation if you don't want to do things like call a taxi or use Uber or something like that. If you go back to the satellite and we go to more, um, we can see that there are maps that Google puts out that are occasionally useful. So for example, they have a different section for COVID-19 info. So this is kind of uh, where you could see where hotspots for COVID were um, during the past two years. We can see wildfires. This is primarily useful for not the East Coast, but it will show you where wildfires are. Um, and then they occasionally add things and detract things. If there were a hiking map, uh, this is where you would be able to click on it. So from here, I can see that they have biking as an option, uh, but they don't have hiking yet. Uh, I've never used the biking map, but I assume it's more useful in cities than in uh, towns like Peterborough. All right, so if we go back to Peterborough, actually, let's go to Milford. Milford, New Hampshire, it's right near Peterborough. All right, so let's say you've eaten at all of the Peterborough restaurants ever, and you want to drive at least 20 minutes to get to a different restaurant. Well, Milford, let's see. So let's search for restaurants. So what Google Maps will do is it will take my current location, so basically where my screen is showing, and it will search within that area for whatever my search term was. And then I can kind of see on the map where all of these things are. So on the left-hand side again, I can see kind of this menu where it gives me the name of things. And as I hover over it, um, it's probably slightly difficult to see just because of how close everything is. But as I hover over them, it will point them out on the map of where it is. So I can see that Grill 603 has a 4.2 out of 5, 732 ratings. And it is currently open, and it closes at 9 PM. Uh, it has dine-in, curbside pickup, no delivery options. And then I can click on reserve a table right within Google Maps. Um, if I was looking for some Chinese food, uh, you can always search Chinese food. Um, but I can see that, you know, J Dragon is right here. And I can see that it has two dollar signs next to it, which means it's moderately expensive. Um, and then I can see again that it closes at 9 p.m. And I can click on reserve a table or whatever I so desire. Tim, can you click on directions? Because sometimes when you do that, the X sign that's up here doesn't appear. So if you want to just expand the map and take away the directions, sometimes that doesn't happen because there's no option to X out of it, even if you drag the map. Do you know what I mean? No, uh, so if I click, so for Greenleaf, right? Yeah, if so I just, click on it, it will bring this up, which is the tab of information for Greenleaf. And right, then if so I if hit you, if you directions. Click on directions. Because right now there's an X sign on top so that you can get out of. Sometimes there's no option to do the thing. And then I try to drag the map over. Yeah. So if I put my starting places, Peterborough and Greenleaf as the 
destination, um, this is what it looks like. Uh, it says it will take me 26 minutes and it is 17.6 miles away. So if you click on details, see that X sign on top goes away. So do you have to go back to the previous page to X out of it? Yeah, you have to go back to the previous okay. page. Okay. Yep, uh, and these are kind of, if you were familiar with MapQuest a full decade ago, um, where you would print out the details. If you still like doing that, um, this is where you would go to do that. You would go to details and then it shows you, you know, go on this road for 0.2 miles, continue straight for 14.5 miles, continue straight, merge onto Union Square, which all that means is go straight and then continue straight onto Nashua Street. So basically from Peterborough, the directions are go straight. Um, helpful to have the, it's helpful to have the arrows because if right now it just says head southeast without the arrows, you have to be non-direction challenged to figure out where southeast is if you're just new to town, yeah? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, granted, I did just put Peterborough. If I put Peterborough Town Library, it would say turn right, you know, in order to exit the Peterborough Town Library, turn right and then go straight for a really long time. Okay. Um, so if I wanted to uh, go here, but I want, I have a reservation for 8 p.m., you know, so the, so the distance for the distance won't change, but the time might change. Right now it's 26 minutes away, but if I want to arrive by, I want to arrive by, well, my reservation's at eight, so I wanna get there at like 7.50, just so I have time to park and not panic. So seven. Uh, let's change this to 50. PM, uh, August 9th, via State Route 101 East. I can see that typically it will take between 24 and 28 minutes to arrive. So I should leave around 722. So Tim, we have a question in, in the classroom. Okay. Tim, um, often I will plan a route to somewhere using Google Maps. And then I don't like the route because it doesn't take me past something I want to go past. And you can grab the route and drag it, right? But Correct. It happens when I drag the route and grab it, it won't grab the bit that I want it to grab and it will make loops and weird things. So I, I, can't, I can't get a straight route when I get is a route which takes me uh, on loops rather than is it is there a trick that i'm missing on dragging and grabbing the root um am I making sense you are making complete sense uh, i will right after this i'll do a long route uh to kind of see uh, if we can drag it to different locations and then and we'll see can, what happens you can also add a stop that's yep. dragging the route correct um, so this, uh, basically we have these directions set. Um, however, I'm not going to be using my computer on the road for directions. So from here, what I would do is I would just click on send directions to your phone. And then I would say, yep, I would select my phone and then it would send me a little map icon. Uh, to my phone where I can click on it and then get directions whenever I need to go there. Um, if I do this, uh, I don't know on Apple what happens, but I know on Android what happens is it will remind me and it will say, hey, you have this destination where you're trying to get there at 7.50, so around you know 7 o'clock or 7.02, it would say, hey, uh, just a reminder, you need to leave in 20 minutes to start driving, which I find useful. Um, so how about we go to a much further away location? Instead of Greenleaf, let's go to Pittsburgh. Now, 
this is a drive. Um, so we can see a couple of different things. One, we can see that Google says, hey, there's an hour and 40 minute flight that costs $178 that leaves Boston and goes to Pittsburgh. Do you want to use that? So for longer trips, um, Google will give you the option or at least show you what a plane flight would be and the price. So $178 um, with the gas prices that they are now, if I'm driving with another person, it's significantly cheaper to drive. Um, but if I was going solo, you know, $178 doesn't seem so bad kind of thing. But, and, and these prices are kept up to date? I mean, yep. Yeah, so if I if I click on it, um, I can yeah, so I can see you know it searches Delta, JetBlue, American. It also searches Spirit. So generally, whenever you see whatever the lowest price is, it'll generally be Spirit. But I can click on the show in uh, Google, or I can see on Google Trips or whatever. Oh, so I can see that the one hundred and seventy eight dollar round trip is from Delta, uh, and it would leave at 2 20 p.m today okay. uh, but then up here you know i could i could search for a different time or stuff like that yep that's how that works um, let's go back to the route and i can see it gives me a couple of different options i can see via 84 it'll take me you know nine hours, 10 minutes, nine hours, 30 minutes via 76. Um, but I can click on, leave now, uh, but I can click on options to kind of see a little bit more. So if I click on options, it can let me avoid highways. It can allow me to avoid tolls. And most importantly, it can uh, allow me to avoid ferries. For some unknown reason, sometimes it's faster to take a ferry uh, strictly speaking, but it's never faster to take a ferry. So don't take a ferry unless you're going to like Nova Scotia or something. Yeah. All right, so moving things. So if, so the first way I would do this is, for example, I have a relative in State College, Pennsylvania. So I would click on add destination and I would select State College. State College, Pennsylvania. And I can see I'm already going right through State College, so that doesn't really matter. But you can see that I can drag to reorder, and it will now take me from Peterborough to State College, then Pittsburgh. So let's, instead of State College, let's go to Harrisburg. Let's go to Hershey. I want to go visit the chocolate. <laughs> So now you can see the entire route has changed because I've added this destination. So now it'll take me via I-78 instead of 84 because it's taking me to Hershey. Now, if I want to manually just go in and say, I hate this section of road, or I want to go to reading, the other option I can do is I can click on the map or on the route and I can drag it. And you can kind of see how the map's trying to figure out what it wants to do. And I can drag it all the way to reading. And now it's changed the route again. Um, but it's changed the route, but it has not added a location. So one of the awkward things that can happen is if there is really, really, really bad traffic on this route, Google will occasionally be like, hey, why aren't you using 78 because it's faster and then it will reroute you to somewhere that you didn't want to go so if you want to definitely go to a certain location you want to go up here and hit add destination and then you want to drag it to the correct uh time yeah nope you want to make sure that they're in the correct order. Um, now, if I were to send this direction to my phone, I would have all four of these locations on the map, and it would take me to each one in sequence. 
Uh, you can have up to, I believe, nine destinations on a single trip, um, which is useful. The next thing I like about this, <clears throat> and I do like planning my routes in this big view before going on them, is if you notice whenever I hover over the route, it may be a little bit tiny, but whenever I hover over the route, it will tell me the distance. So right now from Peterborough, I can see at this point in time, it is 341 miles. Well, it just so happens my car has a gas tank that will get, get me about 440 miles away. So I'm going to go down to around 400 miles. So 399. I don't want to be greedy and go like 420 miles. So I can see around here, I'll be, you know, getting that E for empty on my car. So what can I do about that? Well, one thing you can do is you can go to the top left and click on search, and then you can search for gas stations near here. You can also, while you're driving, you can just physically out loud say to your phone that's using Google Maps, you can say, hey, Google, find me a gas station on my route. It's also really a nice. gas icon on the top, Tim. Yeah. And then the third option is to just click on gas up here. Um, the reason why I like clicking on gas up here, uh, you know, before rest stops is sometimes rest stops are just texting stops that don't really have a place to go to the bathroom, or they may not have a gas station attached. Um, is this kind of is the best of both worlds, it just kind of figures it out for you within this area. So I will click on gas. And it will now show me gas stations. So I can see that there's a shell here along my route. I can see that there's a shell here, which is pretty far off my route, so I don't want to go there. I can see that there's a shell right here or a gulf station right here. This, seem, this one seems pretty good. So I will click on gulf, select it, and then I will hit this icon. What this icon does is it will add a stop. So now I can see that I'm going from Peterborough to Reading or Reading, going to Hershey, then going to this Gulf station. So now it's on my route, and I will remember that I have selected a gas station to go to. Um, you know, obviously, you can find a different gas station, and then you can just remove this one from the route. So if you stop at an earlier gas station because you desperately need to go to the bathroom anyway, and then you realize I don't want Google Maps to tell me to keep going to this location, you just go over to it and hit the X and it will remove it from the planned trip. On the first so, map that you did, Tim, there was a, a bunch of yellow things on the route. What does that mean? Uh, the yellow things were just traffic. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, so the yellow um, kind of uh, triangle icon just is uh, for road work. This is kind of round and then black in the middle. <laughs> it was a strange then, I meant yeah, to. The, if I see it again, I'll remember what it is. But right now, I can't really think. I can't really figure out what that might be. All right, um, so this was a long route that we kind of moved stuff around. We added destinations and all that fun stuff. Um, again, once you've done this, uh, you just click on send directions to your phone and then your phone will have all of this information. Uh, the other fun thing that gas stations have that the gas station icon has is, as you can see, for some of them, it will tell you the price of gas. That's nice. So, I mean, if you need gas, you need gas. But if you're in a position where 20 cents a gallon would make you happy to not spend that, I know it makes me happy to not spend the extra money, um, then you can quickly kind of look at what the different prices are. 
So for example, there's no way I'm going to this Sunoco because it's $4.90, but this $4.23 gas station looks a little bit better. So I can make sure that I go to a gas station with lower gas prices. Not every gas station will have this information, but I do find it useful that some of them do. Excuse me, Tim, on the top above Sharpsburg, there's those yellow signs with the black in it. There's two of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is, I'll see if I can click on it. No, it won't let me. Oh, okay. uh, but I'm hovering over it and you can see that it's a construction zone. Okay. So if anyone's ever driven through Pennsylvania, uh, the important things to remember or think about whenever you hit construction zones are one, the speed drops by about 20 miles an hour and two, the fines double. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever in a construction zone in Pennsylvania, make sure you're not speeding because a construction zone is Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania is defined by at least one piece of construction equipment there. It doesn't matter if stuff's happening or not. If there's a, if there's a roller on the right-hand side of the road, fines are doubled and the state police uh, like taking advantage of that. Well, we have budgets to, to manage, you know. Exactly. So um, real quick, uh, as I'm going through Hershey, I see that Zoo America is right there. If I click on Zoo America, I can one, hit add stop, go to the website, but there's also the save option. So this is where lists come in. If I click on save, it will ask me, where do you wanna save it? Um, you can create a new list. So I have a list for food, and I have a list for reading, mainly so the Peterborough Library can go in there. Um, but generally, if it's someplace you want to go, I like to save it in the want to go place. Now it's saved. So I'm gonna cancel all that stuff and click on here, the hamburger icon, the three horizontal lines. If I click on this, I can now click on your places and I can go to want to go, and I can see that I want to go to Zoo America. So it'll, it'll save the location so I don't have to remember what it's called. I don't have to remember where it is. I don't have to try and find it again. It'll just be saved right there. If I hit add note, I can say has bears. <laughs> and then done. And now cool. I can see that the note, you know, whatever I type in there, so I can say like, you know, remember to park outside because parking inside is $10 an hour and outside's a flat $5 fee kind of thing. So you can add notes to your locations and it's very easy to then go to them in the future. The other benefit is if I search zoo now, it will pop up under the search icon, even if I'm not, even if it's not the closest zoo. So this is kind of the thing you can do with your dentist's office or your optometrist, that kind of thing. Nancy, did you have a question? Okay, I just wanted to, to review how to get to it. Okay, so you go to locations and then under locations, you have choices of want to go, restaurant, blah, 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 right? Yeah, so in order to save the location, so I'm just going to go to Peterborough and I'm going to go to, um, let's go to Harlow's. I will click on Harlow's. So I will click on the location that I want to save. Mm -hmm. Then when it pops up, I can either click here with the save icon or on the left-hand side, I can click save. And I can save this one to my food list. And now it's saved. In order to get to all of my saved things, I go to the, the hamburger and I go to my places. Hamburger. What are you talking about? There's three lines. There's three lines. Three horizontal lines. Oh, okay. It's just the menu. With the hamburger. Okay. Does it look like hamburger? Click, and then your places. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so you're saving it. Do you have to say you're saving it to your phone, or it just goes with the trip? What um, it's it's saved to your Google account. So it's not saved to a particular trip. It's, yeah, it's, sa it's saved to everything. 
Okay, now if you are out walking around and you want to find this on your phone, yep. not on your computer where you have all this stuff, where do you okay. go on your phone? Now uh, let me click on my phone real quick. Calendar, this, this. I guess I'll admit you. Perfect. Oh, I need, do I need to make you co-host so you can share? Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a good way to sort of study a small town to understand, you know, the businesses and all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Don't necessarily know. Yeah, but if you're in another country, and you're, and you're, you can find the things on your computer, mm -hmm. and then you have to save them to your phone before you go out because you're not going to have. You so if I'm on my phone, which you should be able to see now. Okay. Um, let me drag this screen. Um, so at the very bottom, I have the saved icon. If I click on that, I can see, well, the two most recent things I've, I've saved, Harlow's and Zoo America, but I can click on food. And then I can see that I have two locations saved. I have MT local and I have Harlow's. Okay. There's an icon for save locate save list on the phone. Yeah, it's at the very bottom. Yeah. One of the nice things, um, or another nice thing is the icons stay the same on the desktop and the mobile experience. Um, so let's say, so for the car parking thing, let's just go over that real quick. You can see that it's, I have a little blue dot as to where I am. I click on it and I can say, save parking. Once I hit save parking, it will remember, it will remember that this is where um, my parking is, my car is and then allow me to find it easier next time. Would it be easy to show them how to, to create a map and then download it to their phone so they didn't need internet? How to create a map? I mean, in directions, sorry. I mean, yeah, this Zoom icon needs to get out of the way. Yeah. Um, so let's go to Pittsburgh. So uh, you can see on the card, which is the bottom section, I can move it up and down, but on the card, I have an option for download. If I click on that option, you can see that it, the, a portion of the screen is now taken over and is now like lit up versus not lit up. And I can make, I can select how big or how much of the map I want to download. And everything within this circle will be downloaded directly to my phone. The benefits of doing this um, are generally found in a big city or in a location where there's really, really crappy coverage. So the reason why you might wanna do this in a big city is sometimes you're in buildings or underground where you don't get good cell phone signal. Uh, so it, it's useful to have the map kind of saved. And this will save the map for, um, for roads, for walking directions, and it will also save it for uh, places like restaurants, gas stations, um, and more importantly, we'll save it for those underground areas. So the subway kind of thing. So public transportation will also save that information. So I will search 
I will make this as big or as small as I want by pinching and zooming. And then I would hit download. You can kind of see at the bottom of the screen, it says downloads may take up to 50 megabytes of your free space. So that's giving you a rough estimate of how much memory this map is going to take. Um, so you can kind of determine how big of a map you want to download. That's great. That's really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but otherwise, one one fun thing you can do on your phone is sometimes you don't have access to both hands in order to pinch and zoom. If you double click, it zooms in. If you click and hold, I didn't do it. If I double click and then move in and out, I can move my. So if I'm moving my thumb up. It zooms out. If I move my thumb down, it zooms in. So if you want to zoom in or out using one hand, you can double tap the screen and then move your thumb, in my case, or your finger up and down to scroll in and out on your phone. Okay. I find that just like a little bit easier to do than trying to pinch and zoom. Um, especially because obviously the other person's driving while I'm moving the map around. Are there any questions or is there anything that anyone wants to see on the phone? A million things, yeah. Um, <laughs> mostly if I'm in another country, before I leave my room, I will make a map, right? And then I will down, I will make the map as small as I can so that it will take less space, but but it but still be useful. And then download it to my phone, right? Yeah. Okay. Then do I go back to my computer and put on restaurants and stuff, or should I do all that before I download it? Um, either way, uh, it doesn't really matter. Your the map will update as long as whatever you whatever sections of a map you have downloaded will update whenever Google Maps senses that you're connected to a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, good. Uh, depending on your depending on your phone settings, it might also wait until you're connected to Wi-Fi and plugged in because it doesn't want to do something where, yes, it's connected to Wi-Fi, your battery's at 60%, it's downloading information for two hours, now your battery's at 20% and you're screwed kind of thing. Okay. So depending on your phone settings, it will wait until it's plugged in and on Wi-Fi. So it will, it will try to not use data as much as possible. Okay, so I could should do as much of that as I can while, it, while everything is plugged in before I leave my room. Right. Yep, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I really like doing it on the computer, uh, just because I have a massive amount of space, and mm -hmm. my phone can just be sitting there, plugged in, charging, and it will be receiving all of this information. Right. And where do you go to to make sure that it gets Wi-Fi instead of using data? If Wi-Fi is, is um, available, where in the settings would that be? Like on your phone, uh, you can kind of see in the top right-hand corner of mine, I have the Wi-Fi icon. So that just lets me know that I'm connected to Wi-Fi. If you don't see that icon, then you're not connected to Wi-Fi. And then all you would need to do is just go to settings, go to Wi-Fi, and make sure that you're connected. So right now I'm, I'm connected to the home Wi-Fi. So if I go over how, and the Wi-Fi icon is green. So that means whenever there's Wi-Fi, it's going to go there rather than use data. Yes. Okay. And also on your phone, is there a, a um, setting for preview after you do all your stuff? Like, you know, when you go down with directions and everything, is there a, a thing that you do preview and then go directly to back to maps without having to go out and come back in? Uh, I don't know what you mean by going out and coming back in. Because sometimes, one times the map decides to preview itself, and then so the 
woman doesn't start talking until I get out there and, and we do everything. Because preview doesn't talk, it just shows you what's happening. See, okay, click on the preview on the bottom of your thing. So now, can you have the person talk to you while, while it's there in the root preview? How do you get back to the place where the woman is talking? Uh, so I would just hit, hit the back button on the top left. Oh, from the, okay, from the preview, okay. Yep. Thanks. So one of the other things is you can definitely see that the experience is a little bit different on the phone. You still have access to everything, but it's slightly more complicated just because of the screen space limitation. Yeah. So um, any... I'm sorry, I was just oh, saying. Just... Yeah, go for it. Anybody have any questions for Tim before we wrap up? Yep. And just one other little thing. Um, if you have a time set um, and you're doing this all on your phone, one of the nice things is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can click on the remind you to leave on time oh. option. Um, so for Android phones, I believe, or at least on my phone, um, I keep saying all Android phones, but they're all different. So on my phone, it will automatically remind me to leave on time. Uh, but on iPhones, remember to click on this little little box, little option, and then your phone will say, "Hey, you have you know 20 minutes to start moving," kind of thing. That's wonderful. Um, Tim, so just say sort of. Thought, thought provoking question. I don't know if you feel this way, Tim, but I feel like I spend less time with landmarks than I used to when I was driving and somebody said, okay, turn at the statue of so-and-so um, because Google will just tell me what to do and I just do what I'm told. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. And if you lose touch with Google, you're lost. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that is one of the kind of things I like about um, just taking time, kind of like if, if you are the second person in the car, you can always open up Google Maps and hit see nearby attractions. And then wherever you're located, it'll show you a map of all the different things around you um, in case you wanted to, you know, see the world's biggest ball of yarn or sit <laughs> in the world's biggest chair kind of thing. You know, back in the good old days. Absolutely. So have you ever used Apple Maps, Tim? Yeah. Yep. Because I we my husband and I were driving back on Sunday, not from very far away. And I have a Pixel and he has an iPhone. So we decided we would have a competition. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. There are there are differences. They get you both to the place that you need to get to, but it's slightly different sort of approach. Do you have a preference, Mary? Um, well, I I have a Pixel phone, so I use Google Maps more, and I like exploring Google Maps. But Apple Maps will tell you the second stoplight, turn left, oh. which is a nice sort of mm -hmm. yeah. way of getting. So you're not looking at a screen while you're driving at the same time. Because I think the Google Maps is clearer. The the Apple Map has that gray background. I mean, visually. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyways, it's yeah, it's just whatever you're more used to. So I know, um, one of the things I like about Waze specifically is as your car speeds up or slows down it changes how much the map shows you. Mm -hmm. So as you're going slower, it kind of zooms in. And I find that as being very intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I know that really bothers other people because it changes the scale. What do you spell the W-A-Y-S? 
W A Z E. Not even close. Um, but you said yeah. you didn't like it because of it directing you to all the little streets, correct? If you're like in an out of town. Yeah, so it's just very, um, very quick to change your route. Which if you're not familiar with the area can be somewhat disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of see how it looks different. It looks like a little more slanted. Right. But some people like it more. Some people would prefer Google Maps and some people prefer Apple Maps. So, I mean, they're all essentially pulling from the same pool of information, which is nice. Um, it's just which one you prefer more or you're more used to. So for example, on Apple Maps for like large distances, um, I don't find it as good as Google Maps, primarily because I'm able to do so much with Google Maps on my computer in order to set up things like gas stations or what exits I wanna to go to, that sort of thing. Whereas Apple Maps is more of a, you're driving, you're in your car, you're going here and you're gonna like it. Damn it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. Yes, very educational as usual. Thank you both very much. Well, if, if I have your email address, um, if you signed up for the class, I will send out the slides and the recording later this week. Great, thank you so much. All right, take care. Bye. Yeah, bye.